Come on, you ought to put your hands together right there. Psalms 95 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with song. Listen, this is a simple song. We ought to lift it up together. Everybody sing, go, come, say. Thank you for joining us here at New Light City of Praise. Join us for virtual church every Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Visit us at www.newlight.cc. Thank you for joining today's virtual worship experience. Please listen closely for a few announcements. New Light will be recognizing and celebrating its 2020 high school, college, university, and trade school graduates on Sunday, June 28th. Graduation information forms are available on our website and can be downloaded, completed, and emailed to 2020graduates at newlight.cc. Visit newlight.cc and at the bottom of the page, click on Forms. Please send your completed form backed by Sunday, May 31st. If you need additional information, call the administrative office at 757 757- 487-9435. We want to celebrate all grade promotions for our youth pre-K through 11th grade. Grade promotion information forms are available on our website and should be downloaded, completed, and emailed to Grade Promotions 2020 at newlight.cc. Visit newlight.cc and at the bottom of the page, click on Forms. Please send your completed form back by Sunday, May 31st. If you need additional information, call the administrative office at 757-487-9435. joy it is to greet you this morning to prepare to share the word of the Lord with you we are so ecstatic that God has kept us that he has sustained us through another week we are simply grateful for who he is and for all that he's done today as we prepare to share in worship we want to just invite you to lift your hands right where you are acknowledge it that there's no name greater than the name Jesus. That the Bible declares that at his name, every knee has got to bow. At his name, every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. So today we worship him. We honor him and we reverence him for who he is. Come on, right there in your living room, in your bedroom. Come on, can you just join us real quick? Just a little bit of this. Come on, it just says. There is a name. That's a place I can run and be saved. There is a name that can heal. Calm my storms. Peace be still. I can call. On that name and be safe, things will change. So stand and proclaim there's no greater name than Jesus. Jesus, I will stand. Jesus 
Come on, right where you are, can you worship him? There's no name greater. Come on, no name sweeter. Come on, right where you are, he's able to minister to you. Come on, he's able to usher healing into the room. Can you bless his name? Come on, can you celebrate his name? Come on, come on. It's okay, let's worship him for just a few more seconds. Come on. We've got time, we've got time. Stand and proclaim. Hallelujah. There's no greater name than Jesus. Jesus. I will stand and proclaim that there's no greater name than Jesus. strength to us so we celebrate him come on right while you're worshiping would you go with me to the word of God go with me to Judges chapter 6 Judges chapter 6 and we're going to be reading at verse 11 we're going to be reading today out of the NIV just want to share this with you Judges chapter 6 verse 11 says the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abiezrite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family the Lord answered I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites together Gideon replied if now I have found favor in your eyes give me a sign that it's really you talking to me for just a few moments of your time this morning I want to talk to you about being called to be different. Called, but don't feel like it. Carrying an assignment. The 
that seems larger than you. Have you ever had a moment where you looked at what God was calling you to do, what he was requiring of you? Felt unprepared. Felt underdeveloped. Felt like he had to have made a mistake. This can't be my assignment. You are who I'm called to preach to today. It is not by any happenstance that you are watching this service. My assignment is you. Pray with me. Father, this morning we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that it contains. Our prayer now is that you would breathe on us as we attempt to share. Father, we recognize our inability to do anything except you strengthen us, except you enable us. So Spirit of the living God, speak through us that your people might be strengthened, that they might receive answers that they've requested of you. Father, speak through your word today. We trust you. We believe you. We say amen and amen. Again, I want to talk to you for a little while because you may be like me. I can recall a season in my life where I began to hear the word of the Lord as it related to his assignment on my life and I felt like Gideon. This account is one that really blesses me on a number of levels. As we study and look at Judges chapter 6 in its opening, we find out that the children of Israel have disobeyed God. They have, they have, they have done something that he specifically instructed them not to do. The Bible says that they began to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And as a result of that, the Lord allowed them to be placed under Midianite oppression. Midianite oppression was so fierce. What they were experiencing was, was, so, uh, was so devastating that the Bible says the Midianite army, would they would come in, they would invade, they would move so quickly, they would, they would swipe or steal every every crop from the Israelites and along with destroying or, 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 or stealing all of their harvest, the Bible also says that they would come in and kill any livestock or herd that they had. They would leave nothing for them. All right. Here's what's interesting. Many of us know what it's like to be left in a place where we've got nothing. All right. Here's what's even more interesting. The Bible says that that this is the life that they are experiencing. And the Bible goes further to say that, that the Midianites were so numerous. You could not count them. You couldn't, you couldn't count the camels. You couldn't count the tents. You couldn't count the men. They, they looked like a swarm of locusts every time they moved. And the Bible says, the Bible says that they would come in and simply ravage the land. They would rape the land. They would steal everything that there was. And the Israelites are left with nothing. And the Bible says that after they got tired of having nothing for so long, they began to cry out to God. The Bible says they began to pray. They would cry and they would say, Lord, we need your help. All right. Here's what's interesting. You've got to get sick and tired of being without enough that you'll begin to cry out to God for his help. Now here's what's interesting. The Bible says that when the Israelites cry to the Lord, he sends them a prophet. He sends a word. He sends somebody with a word in their mouth and he says, this is what the Lord has to say. You are not here because God is unfaithful. You are not here because God is unjust. You are here because of your blatant disobedience. Watch this. This, this is the word that the Lord sends 
to them while they are suffering. He says to, the prophet says to them, the Lord said, I'm the God that brought you up out of Egypt. I'm the God that delivered you from slavery. I snatched you out of the power of the Egyptian and from the land of your oppressor. I drove out everybody that tried to harass you. I removed them out of your sight. And he said, all I asked of you, all, all I asked of you, all I asked, says the spirit of God, is that you would not worship the God of the Amorites. All right. He says, he says, I just didn't want you to be like the people whose land you were about to inhabit. He says, that was my only request of you. I asked you not to be like them. Well, can I pause right here and tell you what it meant to be like the Amorites? Here's what's interesting. The Amorites are a people when you study them they are a people who lived in the mountains they did not live in low places they did not hang out in valleys they they lived in a mountainous region all right now here's what's interesting about that that if you study it out it also begins to indicate through uh through again through extra biblical study that is study outside of the bible you come to find out that the amorites are a people who because they dwelt above everybody, watch this, they began to think that they were better than everybody. So God says to them, he says, now watch this, Israel, I'm the one that brought you out. I'm the one that delivered you. I'm the one that removed all your oppressors. My only request is that you would not get big headed after I did it. He says, that was all I asked of you is that you would find a way to remain humble. Don't let, don't let where you are get you to thinking that you are bigger than you are or better than you are. He says, no, all I want you to do is walk humbly. That was my only request. That was my only request. God says, all I wanted from you, all I asked for everything I did, all I asked is that you would not worship the God of the Amorites. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't, don't start thinking that you are like them. Don't, don't get to a place where you are be- above everybody else and everyone else is beneath you. Stop looking down on others. God said that's all I wanted to prevent. I just wanted a humble people. I was after a people who could experience my power, a people who could experience my hand, but it not go to their head. He said, that, that's all I'm after. I'm looking for some people. Can I preach for a few moments today? He says, I'm looking for a people who can experience my hand and not let what I do for them go to their heads. Can I tell you that even while you are watching this word today, there is a desire from the spirit of God. He wants to show you his hand, but he needs to make sure that his hand won't go to your head. He needs to make sure that when he provides for you, when he enables you, when he brings you over, when he brings you through when he allows you to experience the good thing when he gives you the fatness of the land he wants to make sure that you will always remain humble and remember that it was God who did it that, that's, that's all he says. he says he says that was my only request I just wanted people who would be humble he says he says he says but y'all y'all didn't do that He says, that's all I asked was that when you go in to possess this land that you don't worship their God. Don't don't start thinking like them. He says, but you didn't listen. So I want you to understand this. The Lord showed up to speak to them, not words of encouragement and exhortation in that moment he revealed to them why they are where they are watch this sometimes God has to speak to us to let us know why we are where we are many of us are after a God who will just snatch us out Many of us are after a God who simply, you know, kind of winks at what we do and and he still allows us to experience all of the manifold blessing of the Lord. Don't get me wrong. God is gracious and God is faithful and God is loving, but God also does not play. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. God is a holy God. And here is the reality of the 21st century. 
century church many of us have gotten grace confused and we believe that we can play with God because God is a merciful God watch this but here's what we find the Bible says that when God shows up when he sends a prophet to the nation he does not tell them I'm getting ready to bring you out what he tells them is why you're here he says you're here because I tried to give you a chance and you didn't follow what I said it is your disobedience that has landed you here and so the Bible says that for a season for a season they are left under Midianite oppression Here, here's what's interesting but then the Bible says a little later that an angel of the Lord comes and he sits down he sits down under an oak tree in, 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 in a land that belonged it belonged to Joash the uh, Joash who is Gideon's father watch this the angel of the Lord comes and sits under a specific tree at the house of a young man watch this and here's what's interesting to me y'all when I begin to study this out the Bible says that he sits under this tree where he finds Gideon watch this Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press in an effort to keep it from the Midianites now now I want to talk to you for a little while because this this was interesting to me watch this the Bible says that when the angel of the Lord shows up to find Gideon he finds Gideon number one he finds him working can I pause right here and tell you that even when you are in less than ideal circumstance there is still a way that you can do some work watch this the Bible says that Gideon is working but but I want to deal with this for a few minutes because the Bible says Gideon is threshing wheat all right watch this to thresh wheat it, it is an interesting assignment because it is the assignment of separating grain it is to pull apart it is to to beat apart that which is productive from that which is unproductive it is to separate the chaff from the seed it is to separate watch this so Gideon is in a season in his life of separation I want to talk to somebody because many of us don't understand where we are. We don't understand why we are where we are. But you are in a season, says the Spirit of God, of separation. There's some things that God is cutting off of you. There are some people God is tearing away from you. There are some circumstances that God has removed you from. Why? Because he's getting you ready to be used for your assignment. Watch this. Gideon is found threshing wheat. Watch this. But where is is he thrusting it not on a thrusting floor watch this he is thrusting wheat in a wine press now now this is interesting this is interesting because Gideon is fulfilling an assignment but he's working in the wrong place this this is so good y'all I, I wish I had wish I had the time to talk you through it the way the way I feel it in my spirit watch this Gideon is doing good work because he is separating that which is productive from that which is unproductive that which can be used from that which has no use watch this but then the Bible says he's doing this separating in a wine press well see a wine press is not designed for a, a, a for threshing wheat a wine press is watch this it is a place where you took grapes so that you could apply pressure to them so that you could get out of them the juice that was in them so that others could enjoy the wine that would come from it watch this I'm on my way somewhere and y'all almost missed it Gideon is threshing wheat in a place where God would where, where, where it is normally intended for grapes to be pressed watch this God has him located watch this where he is dealing with moments of separation while also in a press he is he is functioning in a wine press he is doing the job of threshing wheat but he's doing it in the wrong place in an effort to go undetected by the enemy I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to talk this to, to you for just a few minutes this morning I need y'all to get this Gideon is doing 
what he should be doing, which is working. He's trying to be productive. He's trying to take care of his family. He's trying to make sure that they've got something, even in a, even in, in a, in a climate or an environment that is not necessarily conducive to his success. He's still trying to make sure that he is able to, to, to cause them to have at least a little something. Now, now, here's what the Bible says. He is working, but he's working, watch this, in the wine press. He is doing the work he should be doing, but he's doing it in the wrong place. Watch this so that he is not spotted by the enemy. He is trying. Watch this. I want to help somebody because you are doing the right work, but you're doing it in the wrong place because you are afraid of the enemy. Watch this. Gideon is doing the right thing, but he's doing it in the wrong place. Watch this. To thrust wheat in a wine press makes the work that you are doing twice as difficult because the place you are in is not designed for what you do. Watch this. There are some of us that are listening to me right now and you are feeling the stress of trying to do what you do but you're doing it in the wrong place because you are afraid to make the next move. Watch this. You are afraid of what folk will say. You are afraid of whether or not people will support you. You are nervous about whether or not this is what you're supposed to do. So Gideon is trying to work. He's trying to be productive, but he's also trying to stay hidden. He, he's, he's not comfortable with the idea that folk may know what he's doing. So, so the Bible says, the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says, that Gideon is found threshing wheat in the wine press trying to keep it from the Midianites but then the angel of the Lord appears to him can, can I pause for a moment because Gideon is in hiding All right, I need you to put that in your spirit Gideon is in hiding yet the Lord knows exactly where he is Watch this. Gideon is trying not to be seen. Yet the Lord knew exactly where to find him. Gideon has not, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't use any form of geo tracking on his social media to let everybody know where he was. The Bible says Gideon is trying to literally work in obscurity. Yet the Spirit of God knows where to find him. I'm trying to preach to somebody today to let you know that even though you may feel like you are working in obscurity, the Spirit of God knows exactly where to find you. Can I preach even to a few pastors who feel like you are preaching to empty? rooms you are preaching and you don't have a big following you are preaching and there are not thousands of people that tune in to watch your live but I came to tell you that though you may be working you may be preaching in obscurity you may be serving in obscurity I came to tell you that the Lord the Lord knows exactly where you are the Lord knows exactly where to find you the Lord is watching what you do this the Bible says that here Gideon is Gideon is work, working in a wine press threshing wheat and when the angel of the Lord appears to him the first thing the angel says is sir the Lord is with you God help me preach in this room he says sir the Lord is with you then he calls him a mighty warrior. Watch this. He says, sir, the Lord is with you. If there is anything that ought to bring us comfort in this hour of our lives, it is that the Lord is with us. Can you lean on your neighbor and just shout neighbor? The Lord is with you. Well, Bishop, what are you talking about? to tell you that regardless of circumstance, regardless of what it looks like, the Lord is with you. Sound yes. Sound yes. Lean on your neighbor and sound neighbor. The Lord. The Lord is with you. Hold on. Hold on. He says the Lord is with you. He says but sir the Lord is with you. And you are a mighty warrior. Hold on. How do you call Gideon a mighty warrior? 
mighty warrior when you found him hiding found him hiding in a cave try not to be seen try not to be noticed and you call him a mighty warrior the bible even says he's working behind the scenes so that the midianites cannot identify him watch this but can i help somebody you can't look at somebody in one season of their lives and declare that that is who they are because here's the reality what the angel of the lord knew that you and i may not be privy to is that gideon's name his name is not to be messed with his name is not to be taken lightly Gideon's name his name means one who is called to cut off one who is called to tear down one who is called to push some stuff over one who is called to throw down some idols one who is called can you lean on somebody judge me in the season you see me in don't get it twisted don't get it twisted but there is an anointing on my life where I am called called to cut off called to throw down called to tear down called to push through I wish I had somebody that would help me preach I see y'all here's here's what I need you to know Gideon is greeted by the angel of the Lord who says sir he says sir the Lord is with you and you are a mighty warrior Gideon replies he says but sir he says but sir if the Lord is with us then can you tell me why my life looks like it looks sir you show up with all this word for me. Can you tell me why my life is so jacked up? You telling me that I got the favor of the Lord. Well, I'm telling you, my life don't look favored. You telling me I got the blessing of the Lord. Well, my life don't look blessed. You telling me I got the strength of the Lord. Well, you found me hiding in a cave. Can you tell me how? in the world I can have a God on my side and my life look like this is there anybody here that'll help me today and say Bishop I know I know how Gideon feels because every now and then I look at my own life and I say to myself if God if God is with me If God is with me, then why is my bill not paid? If God is with me, then why am I struggling so hard? If God is with me, then why am I stuff come together? Can you lean on somebody and tell them, neighbor, don't be moved by your circumstance. The Lord is still with you. then why sir why has all of this happened to me but then he goes further he says and sir where where are all the wonders all the miracles 
all the handiwork of God. Can you tell me where that is? Because we've been praying and we've been fasting, but we ain't seen nothing. Where is the hand of the Lord? You telling me that God is with me. I want to know where is his sign? Where are the wonders? Where are the miracles? Where is the manna? Where is the provision? Where is the way? He did all that for my grandma. He did it for my grandfather. He did it for all of them. But where? 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 Where is the God of my ancestors? Where are the signs? Where are the wonders? Where are the miracles? Can I tell y'all that we are just like Gideon? We get it twisted because we are so busy looking for the wonders. We are so busy looking for the signs. But here is the reality. The reality is that the Lord is still with you. Gideon says, where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about? He says, we want to see the hand of God like they saw when they came out of Egypt. He says, but, but my life is indicative that the Lord has abandoned me. Can I preach to y'all that feel abandoned in this hour? You're saying, I know of the testimony of my mama in them. I know about the testimony of my grandma. I know about the God of my great grandparents. But when I look at where I am, I'm almost inclined to believe that the Lord has abandoned me. But can I preach to you today? The angel of the Lord didn't even respond to Gideon. He let Gideon ask all the questions. He let Gideon feel perplexed. He let Gideon still have some wonder. But then he turns to him and says, Sir, go in the strength that you have. Watch this, y'all. This thing blessed me. The angel of the Lord says to Gideon, He said, Sir, don't worry about what I did for your mama and them worry about what I did for your grandmama and then I'm getting ready to do something through you and for you that's going to cause you to never wonder again if I'm still on your side I wish I had somebody that would help me in this moment the Lord is getting ready to do something for you he's getting ready to do something through you that's going to confirm for you once and for all that the Lord this I'm trying to get to my seat y'all this is this is getting good to me he says sir go in the strength that you have watch this don't compare yourself to anybody else don't worry about how I showed up for them go in the strength that you have make your move in what you know go ahead and take the step based on who I have been to you he says go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand watch this then he says to him he says am not I sending you he says Gideon you looking for signs you looking for wonders you looking for miracles he says is my word not enough God help me can you can you just ask yourself is the word not enough watch this you are looking for the material manifestations you are looking for tangible proof but God says to Gideon he says sir am not I sending you ain't my word enough for you watch this so the Lord says to Gideon all I got for you son is my word and then Lord 
said Gideon he said Lord how can I save Israel he said Lord you must have chose the wrong one you must have sat under the wrong tree you must have showed up in the wrong yard he said because you don't recognize that the family I come from we are the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh he says sir we are the smallest clan we are the weakest clan we don't get leaders out of my clan we don't get strong leadership from my family line sir you must have us twisted God help me in this room I need to preach to some of y'all today who are walking with the label of generational stuff on you you've been looking and saying well in my family we don't buy houses we rent in my family we always carry debt in my family we don't have savings accounts I came to tell somebody that regardless of the tribe you come from regardless of the bloodline that you have been born out of the spirit of the Lord the spirit of the Lord has sent me today to tell you that even though you may have come from the weakest tribe you may have come from the smallest clan but the Lord has an assignment that's just for you throw your hands up and shout Lord I'm ready to execute my assignment shout yeah sir my clan is the weakest and then he says and I am the least in my family how is it your plan to use me when I come from where I come from and then have you ever paused God to examine me he says I'm the least who even deserves this kind of call he says he says there's no possible way that you want me to do this he says I come from a messed up background and my background has left me scarred it's left me with warped perceptions though my name means fighter sir circumstances have made me a hider they have made me a runner they have made me one who backs down from confrontation you really don't understand whose yard you showed up in he says sir there's no possible way that you could really want me here's what I love the spirit of God responds to Gideon and he says I will be with you watch this and he says and you will strike down all the Midianites together the spirit of God speaks to Gideon right in the midst of his moment of insecurity right in the moment of his right in the midst of his moment of wrestle with who he is and where he comes from and the spirit of God says get in don't worry about where you have come from he says because I will be with you he says I'll walk you through this every step of the way you won't make one move where I will not be there 
you won't take one step where I am not in it with you. You won't have to do anything, get in where you are absent or void of my presence. I got you. Watch this. Can you just look at somebody close to you and say the Lord told me to tell you that he's got you. The Lord is with you. He will walk with you every step of the way. Your assignment may seem large. Your assignment may seem bigger than you. You may look and say I'm not qualified. I don't have the skill set. I don't have what it takes. I don't have the degree. I don't have all of the paperwork. I don't have the certifications but I came to tell you what you do have is a God who will be with you. The Lord says to Gideon he says he says I will be with you and as a result of what I will do with you and through you you will destroy the Midianites at one time I want you to rest today in the fact that God is with you that regardless of the size of your assignment regardless of how you feel about your qualifications I want you to know that God is with you I want to prophesy to about 50 of you that are watching I want you to hear the spirit of the Lord say he is raising you out of obscurity you have been working hard you have been doing twice the work and it feels that you have been overlooked it feels that no one recognizes the sacrifices that you are making but the Spirit of God sent me today to begin to declare over your life that God is raising you up out of obscurity. The word of the Lord says, show me a person who is diligent in their business. They will not stand before obscure men. But he says, I'll raise them up and they'll stand before mighty men. I want you to know that your work ethic is paying off. I want you to know that the fact that you have remained disciplined is paying off the fact that you continue to study the word of God so that you can bring something fresh to the people of God it is about to pay off in your life don't worry about those who have not seen you don't worry about those who may not have recognized your name the spirit of God says to tell you he knows exactly where you are and he is raising you up in this hour he is giving you a voice to the nations he is giving you a word for the for the globe I want you to understand by the spirit of God today that regardless of where you have come from regardless of the size of your family regardless of how big your church is regardless of your membership numbers regardless of, of the generations that you have seen struggle regardless of generational addictions regardless of generational struggles I want you to know that the Spirit of God is raising you up I want you to know that the Spirit of God has an assignment for you and today is the day that he is beckoning for you he is calling for you you he has motion for you his desire is you it's you he wants to use it's you he wants to raise it's you he wants to snatch out it's you he wants to deliver it's you he wants to make whole it's you it's you it's you make no mistake about it the Spirit of God has placed a call on your life. There is a mantle that is resting on you. And this is the hour where he's beckoning for you. 
regardless of where you come from regardless of your family's line regardless of the circumstances under which you were born don't let that stuff get in the way today the Lord desires you he wants to use you he wants he wants you there are those of you who are watching me today and you've already given your life to Christ you're saved and that we applaud but I want to talk to those of you who are watching me right now and you've never given your life to Christ or you have at some point and you've strayed away from him I want you to know that you didn't go too far that he cannot still raise you up you did not go so far that he doesn't know where to find you he is interested in you he wants you would you pray this prayer with me today just say Lord Jesus I thank you for your word I thank you for your desire to have me so today I give you me all of my flaws all of my mistakes all of my imperfections you can have me come into my heart I make you my Lord and Savior today if you pray that simple prayer I want you to know that you have given your life to Christ you have rededicated yourself to him and we celebrate that with you today would you do me a favor text 31996 and just text the word believer text believer to 31996 there's information that we would love to share with you as it relates to your new walk and life with Christ one more time we just say welcome to the kingdom of God welcome to the family of God we are so excited that you've made the decision for Christ today you may be here and have joined us in our cyber sanctuary for the past several weeks and you say you know what I like this new light place I like the worship I like the word I just I think this is where God wants me to be I want you to know that we would love to have you as a part of the New Light family. If that's your desire, you can text the words New Light, the name of our church. Text New Light to 31996. We would love to share information with you about the New Light house. We are so honored that you are even considering this place. We believe that we are a house where the word of the Lord is taught and the people of God are free. We want you to experience that with us if it's your desire to be a part of the New Light House. Just simply text the name of our church, New Light 31996. New Light, lastly, I want to invite you at this time to sow, give to the work of the kingdom of God. All of our family, all of our friends, those who are sharing in worship with us during this time, we want to invite you to sow into what we believe is good ground. New light is good ground. We are constantly about the work of the kingdom of God. All we want to do is expand the kingdom. Would you take this opportunity to sow? Media is going to display information for you for all of the digital platforms that you can utilize to give today. Please know that on behalf of Pastor Jay, myself, and 
our entire family. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing in worship. Know that we love you and we are praying for you. God bless you until we meet again. <laughs>